Recently, talk about rural affairs has been a hot topic in the Chinese media. There are three key elements to this discussion. They are retiring forests and restoring farmland, retiring 80 million migrant rural workers, and constructing a comprehensive rural administrative and law enforcement team, or Non Guan for short. We observe that these three elements complement each other. Highlighting the methods used by the current Communist Party leader Xi Jinping to deal with the tide of unemployment and as a prelude to war with Taiwan. First, let's start with Non Guan or rural control, which is currently causing the most fuss. This time, the newly established rural and urban administrators don't look much different from the infamous Changguan city bylaw officers in terms of apparel, with the rural law enforcement embroidered on their armbands. On April 14, 2023, China's Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs officially confirmed the existence of the Comprehensive Rural Administrative Law Enforcement Brigade, whose enforcement boundaries are set in the areas of seeds, pesticides, veterinary drugs, feed, agriculture machinery, animal and plant quarantine, and epidemic prevention, quality and safety of agricultural products. And fishery administration and guarantees no interference with the normal production life of farmers. But regulations from the central government are remote to these members of the rural administration. Let's see how they define their job. What do you think we rural administrators are? What you traffic police don't cover, we cover. What you city administrators can't cover, we cover as well. We have royal authorization, and we can act first before permission. This is rural administration. As such, when they appear in the farm field, a strange phenomenon appeared in rural China that hasn't been seen for thousands of years. Look, uniformed rural administrators enter the village with a net to catch all the free-range chickens kept by peasants in the name of improving the appearance of the village. In some places, villagers aren't allowed to keep cattle, so they drive cattle to the village committee to demand an explanation. In the name of law enforcement, there are rural administrators who sell rural families' livestock by force and keep the money. In some places, villagers are fined for raising cattle. What does it mean when you don't allow cattle to graze? What did we do wrong? Cattle grazing is now prohibited. In northeastern China, on their first day of work, the rural administrators took away the freezers on the grounds of safety for rural households. The most lucrative fines are those issued to operators of agricultural machinery. This is because Chinese peasants have rarely heard of licensing requirements before. A netizen commented, "If they check licenses for farm machinery, my whole family would be in violation." Another netizen said, "Agricultural machinery requires licensing. Can a 60-year-old pass a licensing exam?" The majority of those who actually plant the fields are old people. If they fail the exam, does it mean that the crops won't get planted? Some local governments are training rural administrators to guide peasants in farming. It sounds a little strange that a short course in farm management is going to be more capable than people who have been farming for generations. Some peasants were forced by rural administrators to take the exam to become licensed in farming. The test site is set up in the field and focuses on pesticides, plowing, mowing, etc. According to the government standards, many peasants will fail and will have to go to specialized institutions for training. Naturally, peasants need to pay the fee. It's said that if one fails the exam, one can pay to retake it. It's yet another way to create revenue for the local authorities. Look, the certificate says "New Vocational Certificate for Farmers." I don't know if you've ever heard of a farmer certificate or seen a farmer certificate. If I don't have it, am I farming illegally? We were required to attend training and were told to pick up our graduation certificate today. We went to see what that certificate looked like. 
Do you see it? Certificate of high quality farmers. Agriculture in developed countries is highly mechanized and large scale. It's done by professionals who are highly skilled. China has a big gap when compared to it. The skills of Chinese peasants are based on the accumulated experience of generations. Western agricultural certificates are designed to ensure that farmers can better master modern agricultural techniques. So what's the reason for the Chinese Communist government suddenly requiring peasants to be certified? In addition, there are rural administrators who forbid peasants from planting corn and beans near fish ponds, interfere with what crops to grow, and even uproot planted vegetables. Rural residents have reported that they are forbidden to grow vegetables and fruits in their own yards, and when they are found, they will be pulled out. They need to apply for permission prior from rural administrators for any regular farming care work such as spraying pesticides and fertilizing. In some cases, they aren't even allowed to air dry clothes in their own yard. <laughs> Some netizens reported that rural administrators went to the households to investigate and record information about the size of the family the number of pigs, chickens, and ducks raised, the number of fish in the fish ponds, the number of acres of land in the family, what they have planted, what time of day they go to the field, and what they do when they aren't farming. The public can't figure out what the government is trying to do with this move. In fact, as early as a year ago, rural administration has been quietly laid out in several provinces and cities in China. According to official reports in China, comprehensive rural administrative law enforcement agencies have been set up since 2018. At the end of 2022, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs announced the administrative measures for comprehensive rural administrative law enforcement would come into force on January 1, 2023. According to the official, over 2,500 related institutions have been set up nationwide, with more than 82,000 law enforcement personnel on staff. For example, there are currently more than 5,000 rural administrators in Wuhan, Hubei province. This raises another concern. Who is going to pay for the expenses of such a large team? Chinese people soon found out the answer. With the establishment of the new rural administration unit comes the rural property tax. The fee is charged on a per capita basis, 5 cents per person per day, based on the number of people in the household register, regardless of whether they live in the rural area or not. If China has 700 million rural accounts, that's 12.8 billion yuan, or 1.86 billion US dollars. This fee is also likely to rise in the future. According to the previous policy of the CCP, for example, the Rural Cooperative Medical Care started at 10 yuan, but currently it has been increased to 350 yuan. This means that peasants have to pay money for a group of people to control them. Through the chaotic situation of rural administration law enforcement, we can see that what has been destroyed on a large scale are mostly cash crops, fruits and vegetables, tobacco, etc. There should be an agenda behind it. Reports from various sources also show that Chinese officials are sending peasants to grow food crops such as potatoes, corn, and sweet potatoes. This ties in with the second key element, which is the communist government's efforts in recent years, especially this year, to promote the restoration of farmland from forests. Growing rice on the mountain is very popular among farmers. This year, Yunnan has introduced 500,000 mu of rice, and our village has developed 405 mu, with the highest yield of 788 kilograms per mu and the lowest of 624 kilograms per mu, with a total yield of 280,000 kilograms. Our village, 277 people, produce more than 1,000 kilograms per capita. The rice bowl is firmly held in our own hands. More than 20 years ago, around 1999, China's central government demanded the opposite for the rural areas, asking farmers to retire farmland to the forest in order to combat soil erosion and other problems. The latest policy has changed to retiring forests to farmland. 
As such, local officials are destroying green forests and flattening them to make new farmland in order to fulfill the latest political mission from the top. In some mountainous areas where land has been deserted for years due to population relocation, local governments have encouraged peasants to develop orchards. Growers have invested all their money in the land only to be asked to cut down the trees when the harvest is almost ready. Radio Free Asia reports that the grassroots cadres in China's rural areas are forced to do so because of the political mission. In one village in the south, they were forced by their superiors to clear the land in 2022, and the village had to spend tens of thousands of yuan to do so. I didn't expect that there would be more tasks this year, the village cadre said. If this continues, the village will go bankrupt. Communist officials seem to have less common sense than ordinary people when it comes to what to plant where. The first problem with growing rice is water. If the weather is dry, even if we build a dam on the top, there may not be water inside. Is it realistic to pump water from the bottom of the mountain to fight the drought? Not to mention that in case of flooding, it is common for the fields to be washed down. The mountainous terrain is trapezoidal, all small pieces, small pieces of land. Is it practical to farm it with machines? If not mechanized, how much additional labor will it require? In some desert areas, when developing arable land, even small saplings have been uprooted. Some Chinese believe that the reason for the government to turn forests to farmland on such a large scale is that China doesn't have enough food. But in fact, according to the annual data released by the government, China's agriculture has claimed to have produced a steady output of over 600 billion kilograms for eight consecutive years. It's equivalent to having about 500 kilograms of grain per capita. In addition to that, China also relies on imports for 20% of its grain such as soybeans and corn, every year, and the per capita consumption of grain may reach 600 kilograms or so. The world average per capita consumption of grain is 400 kilograms. The Chinese possession of grain has way exceeded the world average, so how can it not be enough? Let's put this question aside for a moment and look at the third key element. On March 28, 2023, China's Tencent News published an article titled Behind the Retirement Order. 80 million overaged migrant rural workers have no work, no land, and no retirement funds. The article said that since 2019, Shanghai and Tianjin have issued so-called retirement orders for migrant rural construction workers over 60 years old, prohibiting men over 60 and women over 50 from entering construction sites for any work. According to the 2021 Migrant Rural Worker Monitoring Survey Report, Released by the National Bureau of Statistics of China, the total number of migrant rural workers in China was 293 million in 2021. 
In terms of age, the percentage of migrant rural workers over 50 years old was 27.3%. This means that nearly 80 million rural workers in urban areas would face the problem of overage in the next 10 years. Please note the age restriction of this retirement order. In reality, many companies will automatically lower the age limit further to avoid the risk of further official policy changes in the future. It's fair to say that the number of people affected by this retirement order should be more than 80 million. Chinese media reported that rural workers over 50 years old are the first generation of rural workers in China. They have contributed to China's urbanization and are now aging, but most of them are still working due to a lack of savings. This is because the government pension for each peasant over the age of 60 is only a little over 100 yuan per month, or less than 15 US dollars per month. The Chinese media, Tsai Jing, reported that a survey showed that less than 15% of the first generation of peasants had savings for their old age. Moreover, these migrant rural workers still think that saving 50,000 renminbi, or about 7,281 US dollars, is enough to support their old age. Now the CCP is actually saying to this group of people, go home and farm and leave the bricklifting and delivery jobs in the city to the urban youth who can't find a job upon graduation. Previously, we produced a video about how provincial governments organized urban youths to work in rural areas. Now they are directing migrant rural workers in the cities to return to their hometowns, both of which are intended to drain the flood of massive unemployment. The floodplain has to be big to hold this much flood water, the unemployed population. So hurry up and return the forest to farmland and expand the arable land. What other purposes does the CCP have? Our judgment is that these are also part of the preparation for the war against Taiwan. Yesterday, several of my comrades and I received a call from our original military unit saying that they wanted to compile some basic information about us veterans. I have also seen such information online saying that all veterans are divided into three echelons. The first echelon is under 26 years of age, the second under 32, and the third echelon under 40. I was born in 1988, the year of the dragon, 36 years old. I have been out of active duty for more than four years, we veterans share a common belief, that is, if there is a war, we will return to the unit when called upon. According to the Communist Party's official statement, China's food self-sufficiency rate is 90%, but the grain self-sufficiency rate is actually less than 70%, that is, 30% of the food has to rely on imports. Because Xi Jinping has offended too many people in the Communist Party during his 10 years in power, if he steps down, he is likely to be vindicated. As a result, he needs to stay in power and be re-elected. He can't afford to lose his power and can't afford retirement. He needs a good reason to be re-elected. Unifying the nation and liberating Taiwan is the best cause and most effective way to establish his authority. Once the military is mobilized, the CCP will face not only the Taiwanese military, but also the American one. So it must be prepared to turn against the U.S. in all aspects. Food supply in times of war, hence, becomes a top priority for the CCP government. In addition to food production, the Chinese government also needs to manage rural stability. At a press conference on April 15th this year, the person in charge of the agricultural department stated that it is necessary to accelerate the construction of a nationally unified and interconnected comprehensive law enforcement information system and a ministerial level command and dispatch platform and make full use of modern information methods such as remote sensing and big data. Realizing online case handling, online integration and collection of case data, and real-time synchronized and joint command and dispatch of major cases so as to effectively improve law enforcement efficiency. In other words, the CCP wants to establish a big data system for surveillance in the countryside just like in the city, and it is in progress. The establishment of such a system then will provide great convenience to future military recruitment. For example, under relatively loose management, young people hiding in the countryside will try to evade the draft order as long as they can feed and clothe themselves. But if the rural areas also have a big data system of surveillance, the situation will be different. The CCP's plan is well thought out, but the actual result is a different matter as the reality is far more complex.
In China, one makes little to no money growing grains. One has to grow some sort of other crops to make a living, such as vegetables and cash crops. So how can the grain gap be filled? Moreover, the land that has been turned from the forest is itself less fertile and not very productive. It takes a few years, starting from cutting down the forest and burning the trees, to leveling the deserted land into arable land suitable for farming. Within these few years, there is virtually no production or a very small amount of production. Another problem that cannot be ignored is that as long as CCP officials have power, it means they can be corrupt and use it as a cash grab. What kind of chaos and turmoil will happen in rural China under the management of such a large administrative army? It can be said that when the peasants are being pushed around like this, the Communist Party's Red Dynasty is in its last days.